Amritsar born Vikram Vidge is my guest. He is a versatile restaurateur who is opening a new place and soon popping up on your television set in CBC's Dragon Den, and we'll get to that. But we haven't left the Banff Springs Hotel yet, so take me out of Banff. Uh, three years. Get me to Vancouver. Yeah, so three years go by. Uh, Banff Springs Hotel, I've been there. Um, you know, there's the visa issues and stuff like that, so that kind of brought me to Vancouver. I started working for John Bishop. Uh, a very famous and Rain City Grill. Worked with him for two years, and then I decided that, that was a lucky landing. John oh my God, Bishop. John Bishop is such a great. He's like a mentor to me. He's awesome. He's great, yeah. and um, started working. You know, uh, uh, you know, working for him, and then realized time had come to bring my cuisine and my culture up and showcase this. Because I, every time I went somewhere to have dinner, I would realize that it was like one of those cuisines that was just kind of like tucked under the carpet. It was like, it was considered like, you know, it's like hippie almost, right? Yes, and the landlord would say about that cuisine, it smells. Yes. It's smelling up the building. Exactly. And my landlord. So I decided to open up a restaurant, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I opened the restaurant up. I remember. And the guy is saying to me, you need to shut down. You need to serve something different because the, the, the whole restaurant... And the whole building smells of Indian food. He didn't like it. So I actually put the restaurant up, the first restaurant that I brought up on 1453 West Broadway, up for sale. Had I not gotten the reviews that I did, mm -hmm. I would have never had the cash flow to invest into where we are today. Well, you had the word of mouth reviews because people were saying in this city, you have to try this place. It's, I, a, it's tiny. Yes. It's a little bit of a joint, but the food is Fantastic. Because it was cooked with ult mm. ut utmost love and passion. My mother used to actually make that chicken curry every day in the evening, and she would actually come with a pot of chicken curry between her legs on the bus from Richmond onto Granville and 12th. Yes. She didn't tell me for the longest time that everybody looked at her and laughed and said, what the hell is this woman doing I know. carrying a pot of chicken curry? <laughs> But she and the wants bus smells like curry. A whole curry because it's yes. like shaking in the smell, and it was hot on top of it. So you can imagine what the smell would be. But she never told me. But she wanted to serve the best chicken curry that was out there. She, they would spend. My parents would spend like days, almost like, okay, should we do this with it? Should we do that? Oh, you think the salt was a little too much? You think the turmeric was a little bit this? And they would go in. My father would go in the morning, you know, buy the, the fresh garlic, peel it himself, and all that. So he, uh, he just absolutely loved it. So the balance and the magic. Yes. And then there was a little romance, as I recall. Yes. A little Mi magic. Miru enters my life. I was single at the time. Kind well, of a loser, <laughs> could not get a date, basically, you know. Dump the German girl. <laughs> Uh, and uh, came and Miru came over and she started taking, she's an American, came over just to visit and then we got along really well, got married in December and started working in the kitchen. And she has been running Vidge's Kitchens and Rangoli for all these years and has done a fantastic job of it because she has a great palate, she has great knowledge and she has the passion that requires mm -hmm. to put the food together. So it's not just the fact that I'm the front of the house and the food is, is uh, no, food has the soul. Right. Food has that substance that's required. What do you make of people who are just not into food, do, uh, could eat a can of SpaghettiOs or beans for dinner, have no idea uh, about the sensuality of food, the, uh, the whole magic around food? They must be really what boring in bed. <laughs> I agree. Well, I don't know that for sure because I can't imagine being with someone. He just told the entire audience. I, I, I Vikram couldn't. Vidge is good in bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't. Uh, I could not imagine that how. If you're not into food, that's fine. Yes. You do whatever you want, but do it passionately. Is my question. It could be food. It could be. You could be. Uh, yesterday, for example, I went to a great art opening at 18 Carat. For example, mm. there's a guy. John Rousseau, who makes great chopping blocks. But you could see the passion that he was right. into in wooden chopping blocks. They were brilliant. I was like, this is awesome, because he was oiling it with his hands, and he felt it, and he felt it. So wood was his, his instrument of feeling good, the way spices are to me. So it's not just the fact that somebody is passionate. Whatever you do, do it passionately, because if you don't do it passionately, it shows 
in mm -hmm. your work and eventually just doesn't feel good. Yes, and you know that there is an energy in a restaurant. You can walk into a restaurant anywhere in the world yes. and turn around immediately if something isn't... I don't know what that something is. You know better than I, but do you know what I mean? It's the smell. Like if there's potpourri in the Italian restaurant, you go, no. I should be smelling garlic. Ga exactly. Or I should be smelling that there's a buzz, there's a noise level mm -hmm. happening. You know, you don't have to just smell always, you have to just see the people. If you look at people and they're looking all happy and they're enjoying themselves and they're mingling, that means they're having fun. If you people that are sitting around like this, impatiently going like, like this, you know automatically that there is something not right. Somebody is not paying attention to them. Somebody needs to pay that attention to them. What lessons did you learn when you decided to uh, branch out, uh, take vidges uh, to the supermarket, so to speak? Right. Because we can now buy, you know, frozen curries. But the goal... You don't make the best curry. Exactly. But the goal was to bring best Indian food out there so that one day you and the public can enjoy a home-cooked meal. Takeout should be done once a week of Indian food. Cooking should be done every day as a family together. Open up a bottle of wine, chill out. You know, if one day you, you want to use veggies, uh, packages to enjoy a good meal, go ahead. But I want you to, at the end of the day, actually cook your own food. I want you to cut your own garlic and ginger and and put your spices together and actually physically cook sure. the food chop, together. Chop, chop, chop. Yes. If I say to you, you're, it, it, will you hire me if I'm a good chopper? <laughs> yeah, I would, and because at least we can have a great conversation. We can sit around the, the kitchen and open up a bottle of wine, listen to the music, and say, hey, how was your day today? Okay, don't have to be Master Chef. Uh, but, can, can come from an Indian village, as, as, as so many of your... Women do. Women do. Do you really think that they know how to cook? They still hack the food sometimes. I look at them like, okay, just cook, just chop it. Don't hack it sometimes because <laughs> they just love to just go like that. Mm. But they're such good because they can have a conversation. They all hang out, they talk about it, they talk about the, you know, uh, issues. We all have issues. They talk about their issues. You know, they talk about their mother-in-laws and their sisters and their husbands and their daughters and everybody else. And they can actually communicate with each other. Sure. It's why we have so much fun when we go to the family cabin or the family cottage and everybody's yeah. chopping and cooking and drinking and eating and communicating. Exactly. And are helping. So true. Pulling tomatoes out of the garden and all of that. And, and how magical out. that is if you have the privilege of doing that. Of course, you have to have, but if you don't have the privilege to go to a cottage, try to do it at home within your own realm of friends and family that sure. you have that you can cook with and enjoy with. Uh, a new restaurant, uh, many trends today. A uh, new restaurant's called My Shanti mm -hmm. by Vikram Vij. It's out in South Surrey. And the idea is because I go to travel to India every year, I wanted to bring the cuisine of either a chef or a home cook or just a servant who's cooked great meals for me over the years and the recipe is from these small little towns okay. of India. And my shanti means my peace? My peace. So my shanti means my peace. So every time I go to India, I love the, my, the, the chaos that I'm in. I actually find peace in it. And I love you, just watching people. In the middle of a restaurant, a Martha Stewart <clears throat> or somebody shows up. Ruth Reichel shows up, who is uh, coming on after you today. Uh, <laughs> where do you find She peace? would wait like everybody else. <laughs> okay. She would wait like everybody else. And if Ruth comes in and she says, I am Ruth Reichel, I'll be saying, I'll be, I'm Vikram Vij. Thank you very much. Please come. Let's hang out at the back. Let's get hammered first and then eat. <laughs> and you know how to pair uh, wine with Indian food. Well, I did the sommelier yes, program. You do the sommelier program. And yes. what's the best wine for, say, a hot, uh, spicy curry? Okay, so this is, this is something that I get asked quite a bit. Oh, and I'll tell that. you this in a very loving way. British Columbia produces beautiful whites. Mm -hmm. British Columbia produces beautiful reds. Take a sip of your wine. It's delicious. Take a bite of your food. It's delicious. Take a sip of your red and your food and enjoy it. Don't expect this match made in heaven because Indian food and spices are a unique new thing. So there's no one perfect way. Okay. You can have a great Sauvignon Blanc, you can have a great Semillon, you can have a great Chardonnay, a cool climate Chardonnay. You can have whatever you want as long as you are enjoying it. Who cares? I just that? had a great Semillon that, that <laughs> Barche bro. Unbelievable. Oh, 
Unbelievable. And that's David Schofield, David Schofield isn't Schofield's it? Yes. to buy for the liquor stores. Oh my gosh. We'll yes. Talk. And I had this conversation with him last night. He was at also at that function, and I said, "What do you, what do you really like?" And he says, "Bati Brothers." But he was pouring his rosé, which is unbelievable. Okay. Bati and Schofield. Tried it. Haven't tried it, but we Absolutely have to get beautiful. to the dragon stand because we have about a minute. Yes. Uh, you are a new CBC dragon. I am. Why? Who called you? Uh, well, this was something that took two years to uh, get on it. Uh, they wanted to have, they first asked me for an audition and I was like, mm, I'm not quite sure. But then I said, I'm, if I'm going to go in an audition, I'm going to give my best. I'm going to do the best I can to be on, you know, on the, on the TV show. So they asked for it and it took two years before, you know, before everybody was convinced that I could do it, that I had A, the cash flow, B, you know, uh, the the charm to be able to mm -hmm. st sit on it and, and, and uh, so it was a very tough show. It was an extremely intelligent show, actually. It's not just a reality show. The most heartfelt feeling is the entrepreneurs that come up there. I mean, some of the entrepreneurs that have pitched on this season were just, they have given everything that they have or owned and borrowed even more money in, in a hopes to become sure. a great entrepreneur. Sure, you have to partner with him, and then sitting next to you is David Chilton, the former wealthy barber, always the wealthy barber. Exactly. He's like a human computer. He's computer, and Arlene, who is like the marketing guru, and then there is Mike Weckerly, who's a venture capitalist, nicest guy in the heart, yeah. but he can just look at you like this and just slice And to living. And Jim is like this. Former cop. Jim, uh, yes, Jim. Can take you out. Exactly, Jim, I feel like, is like skating with Gordie Howe. You know, he just sits there, he watches, he lets everybody else do the talking, and then he shoots, and his puck always goes in the net. Much like yourself. What a pleasure. My pleasure as well. Namaste. Namaste as well. My honor. Pleasure. Vikram Vidge. And coming up, New York-born chef and food writer Ruth Reichel. She shares her stories of dining in disguise <laughs> and tells us about her new novel, Delicious, after the break.